non-branded, low quality. Oh my God, I found the generic SSD. That, that, I think I found what you wanted for your non-red digital cinema camera. Oh, perfect. We can now have significantly more errors. Let's take a look at this entry-level RED Minimac that is mainly aimed at the lower end of the market for those filmmakers with less financial resources available to them. This is a RED Minimac 120GB. Inside, you will find that Made in USA RED Minimac 120GB is in truth an ordinary Kingston 120GB MSATA SSD along with two Chinese connectors that conform a simple pass-through adapter. This is one of the most inexpensive Kingston products and the SSD drive is made in Taiwan, not USA. Kingston 120GB MSATA drive is available to the general public for about $20. Red claims that putting Chinese and Taiwanese product in a box and close it with a screwdriver in the United States will transform this product into a USA-made product. Mr. Jared Land, the president of Red.com, in response to our earlier video, stated, nor have we ever said all the parts were made in the United States. The country of origin is the USA because we take all the parts from different sources and transform them into a product in the USA, which is accurate. Let's see how untruthful this is. The United States of America has regulations in place under its general authority to act against deceptive acts and practices. The Federal Trade Commission or FTC controls made in USA and all the claims of US origin for all products sold or advertised in the United States. Federal Trade Commission, under complying with Made in USA standard, clearly defines the standard for unqualified Made in USA claims. For a product to be called Made in USA or claimed to be of domestic origin without qualifications or limits on the claim, the product must be all or virtually all made in the US. FTC goes to extend to give us an example. A table lamp is assembled in the US from American-made brass and American-made Tiffany-style lampshade and an imported base. The base accounts for a small percent of the total cost of making the lamp. An unqualified Made in USA claim is deceptive for two reasons. The base is not far enough removed in the manufacturing process from the finished product to be of little consequence, and it is a significant part of the final product. A Taiwanese Kingston 120GB SSD must be a significant part of Red Minimac 120GB SSD. So, the Made in USA claim is a textbook example of deception. A product that includes foreign components may be called assembled in USA without qualification when its principal assembly takes place in the US and the assembly is substantial for the assembly claim to be valid, the products last substantial transformation also should be occurred in the US. That's why a screwdriver assembly in the US of foreign components into a final product at the end of the manufacturing process doesn't usually qualify for the assembled in USA claim. FTC's example, all the major components of a computer, including the motherboard and hard drive, are imported. The computer's component then are put together in a simple screwdriver operation in the US, are not substantially transformed and must be marked with the foreign country of origin. And assembled in the US claim without further qualification is deceptive. Red couldn't even say it's assembled in the US, let alone made in the US. Give me a moment so I can transform these Chinese and Taiwanese products back into a Made in USA product. There you have it. American-made Red Minimag 120GB, $850, from only $20 worth of SSD. In order to measure the amount of care and consideration towards the end user, I need a special equipment, a calculator. Dividing $850 sales price to $20 worth of actual SSD in it, Red just expanded their money 42 times with a simple screwdriver operation. That is over 42 times markup on an ordinary consumer-grade publicly available SSD on each unit sale. And this is not an isolated practice or a one-off item. The entire range of Red Media products are deceptively mislabeled 
Red Mini Mac 120 gigabyte is from Kingston, Taiwan. Red Mini Mac 240 is from Micron, China or Singapore. Red 480 gigabyte is from Inodesk, Taiwan. Red 512 gigabyte is actually 480 Micron, Singapore. Red 1 terabyte is from South Korea. Hiding an SSD in a box and deceptively call it an American invention by a red is not only good for the business of selling SSDs, but it also opens up a new market for a host of other expensive accessories. For example, let's take a look at Red's Minimac side SSD module. I have this model available to me, but all the models are basically the same. Again, to take a closer look, there are a few screws to undo. That's it, you are in. Knowing that Red Minimac is just a SATA drive, you can say that this is a disguised SATA connector. Red uses a myriad of connectors to disguise the true nature of their products. Let me undo a couple of more screws. These are plastic and a tin sheet metal parts that I set aside. Inside, there's another champ docking station connector, which conforms another pass-through adapter that converts the previously made champ connector back into another SATA connector. As you can see, there's about $2 worth of champ connector, a half an inch ribbon cable or flex PCB, and another $2 to $3, $4 worth of connector and components. So this is all it, a half plastic enclosure. The entire thing is a less than $10 worth of connectors and flex PCB concealed in a box, but that is sold for $1,500. A talented person can come up with a solution to directly connect a SATA cable to the camera to connect a SSD drive like this and skip the use of all that docking station connector crap. Now that we know Red Minimac is nothing more than an MSATA drive, you can easily tell what the other gears are. This is probably the cheapest accessory in the entire Red Media range. Red Station Red Minimac USB 3.1 that is for $195. But we now know that is nothing more than an MSATA to USB 3.1 adapter. Like any of these products on Amazon with their average price of under $20. Let's take a look at this. Looks like a decent one. MSATA to USB 3.1 Gen 2 10 GB per second with USB Type-C for under $19 all inclusive but you put it in a box and call it Red Mini Mac, and suddenly the price tag jumps 10 times up. The previous gen Red Station with eSATA is about $6 worth of tech in a box. A question for you. Would any of these have been possible had Red not made deceiving claims and had false information published? Could Red have maintained this level of markup if they were truthful about their products? Red asserted that we, Red, have significantly less card errors than other companies and presumably other companies in similar field digital cinema camera makers using generic media, even reputable generic media. A couple of days ago, Mr. Land stated, we do not use generic media, it is non-branded, lower quality media. So Red redefined generic media as to be non-branded, lower quality, thanks to Mr. Land, we can now decipher what millions of dollars operation is. We, Red, have significantly less card errors than other companies using non-branded low-quality media, even reputable non-branded low-quality media. And that costs millions of dollars. But how can a non-branded thing be reputable? And where are those reputable non-branded MSATA SSDs? Other companies must have difficult times finding them because they are nowhere to be found. 
So when Red's president stated that it is why we have significantly less carders than other companies using generic media, even reputable generic media, he was probably comparing their media to, um, well, who knows, I don't know. Additionally, back in 2013, when Messenger Land first introduced Red Minimax system, in one statement he stated, it would be nice to be able to dictate to the handful of memory manufacturers in the world the exact layout and chip size. The handful of memory manufacturers in the world? How do you choose a no brand out of only a handful of brands? Mr. Jarland said, what is conveniently being left out is that Genimac launched this product. They did just that. They used a poorer performing SSD Mac and made errors, copying the code off our red mini Mac to spoof it. This caused dropouts and errors. After we filed our lawsuit and pointed this out, they upgraded to a better SSD. Well, this begs two questions. Who changed what? And how does Red choose a better SSD for an expensive Mac for your expensive footage? First, let's refresh your memory. Red Mini Max competitor first came into the market in June, July 2016. Remember all those attempts to deter competition? A short while later, Genitech made a side-by-side -side test and comparison video between Genimac 4AT and Red Minimac 512 and inferred that 512 and 4AT are fundamentally identical. They are 4AT, Red being anxious for the risk of the truth being exposed under this Red user threat as speaking about the competitor product in which one Red user specifically said Jared had some very stern warnings when this came up in the past. Basically, it is IP theft. I would take the warning seriously. This means that Genimac happened in the past. This happened after the Genitech video. Next, another Red user said, So, as I suspected, those clever people at Red were working on not only a better solution, but a cheaper one as well. And there came up Mr. Brent Carter. Hello, I am Brent with Red Digital Cinema, and you're here in our booth at NAB 2014. Mr. Brent Carter is Red's Chief Operating Officer, most probably Mr. Jared Land's right hand. He says, the good news is, even though the prior gen drive was 512 gigabyte, we were able to preserve nearly the same usable space for you guys on the 480s. For the 960s, not quite the same. We now clearly know who was blatantly lying about what to their own customers. Then there is this curious thread user. He asks, Brent, what is the usable space now on 480s? And because he didn't get any answer, he asks again. I've been wondering about actual usable space on 480s versus 512s. That's what I was wondering, an actual number. And here is Mr. Brent Carter again. As a chief operating officer of RED, he knows things that you and me don't know. He has a first-hand access to correct information. He knows what he's talking about. The chief operating officer knows. He states, 512s were 2,450. 480s are 1,850. The actual usable space is extremely close. Don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but I know it is like in low single digit percentage point. So say less than 5% difference in usable space. The chief operating officer informing the customers that 512 gigabyte drives have about 5% more usable space than the new 480 gigabytes. Now that we know this was a lie, if what Red now says about the calculation of the capacity is true, and the drive were not knowingly mislabeled and sold as a higher capacity. Why do you think Red was trying to establish that they had larger usable capacity than they had, which we know is not true? The rest of this thread is a great example of the level of customer care given to the users who just mistakenly bought the higher price for no real technical reason. Now that we know who changed what, Let's see how does Red choose a better SSD for their clients. Let's assume that you have a flagship memory product. 
Let's assume that you said and believe that media is one of the most critical components of the entire system. Let's assume that you spend millions of dollars testing, certifying, and QC every media card that you ship. Although it's hard for some people, let's assume that you actually care about your customers who are generously willingly pay more for better quality. Let's assume that now you are introducing a new item. You have a new opportunity to choose a better SSD for those generously paid customers. Finally, let's assume there is a shred of decency somewhere deep down. This is the new item. Red Mini Mac 960GB. You have three clear, plain options before your eyes. CE is the bare minimum. XE is better. P is the best. The goal is to choose a better SSD. Which one do you choose? I'm sorry, did you get your option wrong? That's right, Red chose CE, the bare minimum. At the same time, you have the opportunity for your new 4AT item. This is Red Minimac 4AT. It's from an off-mainstream manufacturer, InnoDisk, in Taiwan. Again, there are two crystal clear choices before you. You can choose the lower quality standard grade or pay a few bucks more and get the industrial grade SSD. Letters WA indicating the industrial grade in the part number. Letter CA indicates the lower quality standard grade SSD. Which one do you choose? Red chose CA for you, the cheaper, lower quality standard grade. Huge manufacturers such as Micron really spent millions of dollars and established highly sophisticated quality control systems for an item that they are experts on and they manufacture. In the case of Micron, their quality control procedure is an international award winner. What could be a rational reason for any company to not spend a couple of bucks more to get a better grade item and instead take it back home and spend millions of dollars for quality control and certifying? Where Micron, Kingston, Samsung and others already spend millions of dollars for quality control, what can a third-party company gain out of re-spending millions of dollars again to rerun the same tests with way less expertise and equipment instead of paying a couple of bucks more for better grade supplies? And what happens when there's something wrong apart from sending it back to the manufacturer? I've shown you red choices of SSDs. And I trust your intelligence to be a good judge. Mr. Dragonland says, it's not because we're pretending these are magic fairy cards. If I was trying to pretend that these cards were magic fairy cards, don't you think we would have taken the micron stickers with the model numbers off of the SSD? Let's examine how truthful this is. First, Red would have gained a little by removing the stickers. The manufacturer logo and part number are physically laser etched on the actual ICs. Second, once you connect your drive to a computer, the computer recognizes the drive through identity along with the true capacity and model number, like so. Third, Micron, like many other suppliers, offers warranty. Micron offers three years warranty for the consumer grade SSDs. InnoDesk offers between two to six years based on the product. Removing the stickers void the warranty. Speaking of misrepresentation or lying to customers for money, to demonstrate the extent of this pathological phenomenon that we are dealing with, to gain money out of misrepresentation, in a response to a clear and direct question by a customer, I have to take you back a couple of years. Back in 2013, when Red first announced their Red Minimax system via Mr. Jared Land, a customer asked two questions. Please take a careful note. I would like you to specifically remember the first question. This red user asks two points. Number one, any reason not to put the guts of the new 512GB Mac into a standard red Mac shell so we can get the benefit of much better memory pricing without having to buy a new side module or change anything about our setup? 2,450 versus 3,900 is a hell of a difference. Two, there has to be an adapter to use the new Mac in the old site module and docking stations, right? I'm sorry, but it does look a bit like change for the change's sake. Clear questions, plainly asked. Mr. Jared Lamb, the president of Red, answers, no adapter. 
just because it looks like the Mini Mac would fit right inside the old Mac as an adapter. The bus and connectors are different, and the double connection exposed some data integrity issues after heavy abuse. So to make an adapter that we could hardwire to avoid all that, you would either need that adapter 10 inches long, which we tried and it sucked, or make them twice the width of existing Macs, which means you would have to replace everything anyway. And just to shove it down completely, he carries on. New technology makes things better, but there are going to be some people that get stuck with the past and won't be happy. Will you be surprised if I show you the inside of the old red Mac 1.8? Red says, the cost, as I explained before, is because the R&D expense of the development of custom firmware, and yes, I mean camera firmware, to write to the cards. Hang on a second. Did we not pay for our cameras separately? Is it not the case that every digital camera has a custom firmware? Can you ship a camera without a firmware on it? What is a digital camera without a custom firmware anyway? A box full of wires and PCBs? And how does it work? Like, if someone buys many red Minimags, gets more camera firmware than the next guy who has only bought one red Minimag. What happens to him? Does he get only a half a camera firmware? Or maybe Red is kind enough to give everyone a full camera firmware. But those filmmakers who purchased more Red Minimags are more eligible to use the camera firmware than the person with only one Red Minimag, who is less eligible because obviously he contributed much less into the expense of development of custom firmware. And how is it fair if they are getting the same firmware as the next guy with much less contribution? Why should they shoulder more of a burden of the expense of the development of camera firmware? Or maybe there is another answer to this. Maybe this is all a nonsensical excuse to justify ripping off the loyal customers. Mr. Jarlan continues, the testing and the support all that gets amortized into them. And yes, Micron gives us cards with a special code on them. Identification? Code? And this leads us to our next video. Now that we know what kind of people these are and what kind of excuses they may come up with, Let's go technical about the ecosystem, and yes, you can probably do it. True is my defense.